Welcome back to another tutorial folks and something very different from the usual Flames of War content and this is cavalry and Romanian cavalry in this case. Now let's just get straight into it. I've given it a undercoat of German camel black brown as I normally do and then um, in this case I am using flat earth as the main colour for the horses here. Now the figure itself, the rider is going to be a dark brown colour. It's going to be leather brown. So you want to be careful um, that you don't make the colour of the horse too dark as well. There are so many different colours that you can use. So just do some uh, Google searches and follow the shape of the horse. Make sure you're going to give it two coats as always. The lighter the colour, the more need there is for two coats. Just follow the anatomy of the horse and things are going to start looking right. Now, I'm using um, old wood, Panzerdaces old wood, for the highlight here. Now these, as always, are just very small lines placed where possible above any shade that you've left when you've been painting in the main shape of the horse. Oh, just cleaning my brush, something that's, that you probably have to do regularly when you're using a small brush with a very little amount of paint because it will dry very quickly and you need the paint to flow off the tip of the brush in a controlled way so you can get these really thin lines that just catch the eye but create the contrast especially when those lines are placed right beside the dark areas because it creates a real contrast between dark and light and therefore creates the depth that you're after. And as you can see it's starting to come together, we're getting the shape of the horse, something you probably haven't done in 15mm if you've done it at all, uh, certainly not a tank folks, so take your time and just study the horses before you get started. On to the bedroll next and I'm using US Field Drab. Taking the same approach, just looking for folds in the material this time as opposed to the shape of the muscles and I'm using the same colour for the one at the front and the back. Saves a bit of time but you can, if you wish, use different colours just to mix things up. I'm using a bright highlight here folks, quite a highly contrasting highlight so keep the lines small when you're doing that. In this case it is Iraqi sand and here it's really going to help make the folds in the, those just little features make the fold stand out. You can see here, place it right beside the shade, up to the edges is more, up to the edges of the roll more than in the middle of the roll. In the middle of the roll just enough to continue the shape over the back of the horse. The cover under the saddle I've given a coat of green grey and then I'm giving it a highlight of Splinter Camel Base. Now I'm using some German Camel Medium Brown, anything similar, even Leather Brown, even though we're going to be using that later, but anything similar um, is suitable just to paint the few wooden areas and mainly the leather areas such as the, um, the reins, belts and those kind of things. Excuse me, a bit out of shot there folks, but just remember to leave a little border of the German Camel Black Brown around these features. Now I'm using um, orange brown as a highlight. I find it's a good sort of leathery, uh, worn leathery edge kind of look, but it's also very different from the other colours we've been using on the horse, which means it's going to stand out nice and clearly from that background. I tried a couple of things with the mane and the tail up to this point, but it didn't work. They were all when they were all finished they were too similar to the main colour of the horse so I've just went in for black and then I'm using um, German grey but you could also use dark grey and other any similar kind of greys just to pick out the raised areas a bit. The finished result will look a lot better if there's a clear distinction between the body of the horse and the mane and the tail. I'm using a bit of London grey for the metallic parts of the bridle and there's not a lot of them but then also as a highlight on the, the grey areas that we have painted on the mane and the tail and that will just help give us just a bit more depth to the finished look. 
I'm using German grey for the hoofs and that's all I'm going to do on the hoofs you don't have to spend any real time on them folks and then I'm using it on areas that will be black or metallic so that includes the boots and the sword yes we're painting a sword here folks I should say all these areas were originally painted black before the German grey now I'm going in with London grey not on the boots but only on the metallic areas just to give it a bit of a metallic edge, you know, a bit of sheen, a nice highlight that will catch the eye, as it would catch the light. Painting socks or face patches, a combination of both onto the horses, can really make them look different. Even when they're very similar colours, you can use black, you can use white, you can put as many or uh, as little um, patches or socks on as you want up to a maximum of four of course because they've only got four legs folks I started with a coat of London grey and now I'm using deck tan though off-white is also a suitable colour and you can see I'm leaving some of that London grey in the folds if I can keep it on camera in the folds and shape of the, the hoofs so that's really accentuating the shapes down there couple of lines across the front and then just some nice bright white just for some highlights folks we don't want to go nuts we don't want them looking overly white just enough to help make it pop out now we're on to the rider and this is the same colors I would use obviously for a Romanian foot soldier now we're using leather brown it's a nice uh, nice suitable color for the Romanian uniform I am following the folds off the trousers, folds off the tunics. You can see me working on smaller areas before moving to larger areas. So for instance, do pockets, do collars, and then work around them. And that will make sure you, you've left enough space to do those smaller areas. I'm using old wood as a highlight here. It's a nice, strong highlight. You could use US field wrap that's a softer one if you are going for the, the strong highlight as always just be careful you don't use too much keep those lines small follow the shade once again create the contrast by placing the shade placing the highlight above the shade follow the features such as colors pockets to help really make those things those details pop for belts and straps on the rider I'm using the same colors as I did for the horse Gem and Camel medium brown with a highlight of orange brown. And that will stand out against the very brown background of the figure. I will use the same colours on the leather of the stirrup and then the metal parts I'm going to give it a coat of London grey and then I'm going to give it a coat of deck tan just to help it get a metallic sheen and pop out from the background that is the really dark boots. I've given the rider's skin an undercoat of saddle brown which is a nice warm kind of shade colour for skin and then I'm using game colour bronze flesh tone to create the shape of the face and just follow the, sh the shape as, as you would recognise a face folks. Same goes for hands and then accentuate it all with a touch just a little touch of flat flesh. For the helmet I'm using an undercoat of Gem and Camel dark green. Then reflective green is the main colour and there's very little shade left here it's really just round the back. And then to finish it off we've got some green grey just around the edges as you can see and then a few lines maybe across the, the, um, the peak just to give it a little bit more detail. And that's it finished guys. An interesting change I hope you agree. I certainly enjoyed something a little bit different. With the horses there's so many different colours you can use for the horses and I'm going to show you some um, still pictures next so you can see. The still pictures I should point out were painted about 10 years ago and I was using black instead of German camel black brown. But you hopefully see the difference between the two approaches. Here you can see 
the shading all looks quite natural on those browns and it's not overly strong whereas on the older figures you can see especially the, the lighter the the base color of the horse goes the more stark the shade is but you can see there I've used greys light browns so sort of towards the darker end of browns but when I'm doing that I'm making sure it's quite a saturated brown that looks different from the leather brown and that's one of the tricks here folks don't make the riders look exactly like the horses but there you go folks remaining cavalry hope you find it interesting thanks for watching thanks to all the subscribers out there and if you have not subscribed but would like to please hit the button to help me bring this kind of content to more people who enjoy painting flames of war